A significant sticking point with students and the general public alike is understanding what relative humidity is and how it's different than other measures of atmospheric water vapor content. Well, first of all, besides relative humidity, what are some other measures of water vapor content? Uh, the first thing I think is to make sure we understand what is meant by humidity. Um, humidity is just a generic term for the water vapor in the air. Saying the humidity is high is saying the air contains a lot of water vapor. What is confusing sometimes is that the air may feel moist, but is only moist because the temperature is cooler. Uh, for instance, this may happen on a very cool morning or in a cool basement. Uh, this is where phrases like the deep, dark, damp dungeon come from. Uh, dungeons or uh, basements are cool, and this is why they feel moist a lot of times. Uh, it feels damp because it's cooler in temperature. So real scientific measurements of water vapor are needed. Uh, the two most common are mixing ratio and dew point. Mixing ratio measures the actual mass of water vapor relative to dry air. Dew point, on the other hand, is often used by TV meteorologists. Uh, dew point only tells you the temperature to which the air must cool for dew to form. Therefore, dew point does not actually tell you the true mass content of water vapor, uh, but it is an indication of how much water vapor is in the air. The higher the number is, the more water vapor is in the air. So a dew point of 75 degrees Fahrenheit is very high. Uh, a dew point of 25 or less is very low. Relative humidity is not a measurement of the actual water vapor content of the air, nor does it really indicate how much water vapor is in the air. So why use it? Well, relative humidity is often used because humans respond to and feel changes in relative humidity generally faster and easier than changes in dew point and mixing ratio. Uh, also, Clouds form when the relative humidity is 100% or greater. So knowing this value helps meteorologists determine if a cloud, such as fog, may form. Right? To help understand what relative humidity is then, uh, an easy analogy I always use is uh, using containers. So we know that warmer air can hold more water vapor than cold air. Uh, so it's not quite true that the air holds the water vapor, but it's easier to understand this language. Uh, so we're going to use the water vapor, the atmosphere holds the water vapor, uh, even though it's not quite correct. Um, refer to your textbook for a better explanation of that. Uh, it's just not quite the point of the video right now. So I have two bottles here. The larger bottle is the, uh, the warmer atmosphere because it's because it's warmer, it can contain, it can hold more water, so it's a larger bottle. The smaller bottle is the colder atmosphere, since colder air cannot contain as much water vapor as the warm air. So drawn on both of these bottles, I'm going to bring one up to you, are three lines. One at 75% full, one at 50% full, and one at 25% full. The water and both of these bottles is filled just to under that 50% line. So both containers contain just about 50% of what they can hold. So relatively speaking, both containers are 50% full. Or the atmospheres, the warm and the, the warm and the cold atmosphere are both 50% relative humidity. They both hold about half of the water vapor that they can hold. But if you take a look at the actual water in both of these bottles, the warmer bottle has more water in it than the cold bottle. So, I'm going to hold them up to you here. The warmer bottle has more than the cold bottle. So even though the relative humidities are the same, the warm air actually holds more water in it than the cold air at the same relative humidity. So relative humidity doesn't actually tell you about the actual water vapor contents of the atmosphere. Uh, relative humidity changes based on temperature. In this case, the warmer atmosphere had to have more water in it than the cold one to have the same relative humidity. 
Remember, when temperature increases, the bottle gets bigger and the relative humidity gets lower. The bottle is less full as you warm up or you get a bigger bottle. When the temperature decreases, the bottle gets smaller and the relative fullness of the bottle increases.